We begin from scratch by creating a generic 250-seat twin-aisle aircraft along similar lines to the example definition of a 100-seater in the previous lecture. This time we will focus a bit more on some parameter choices that influence aerodynamics and other key design characteristics. The dominant sizing influence for our aircraft will be a range requirement of around 7,500 nautical miles, which is sufficient to cover most major transpacific routes under realistic operational assumptions. We will then make a few changes and re-optimize the design, aiming to get close to the 2014 version of the Boeing 787-8 that we discussed in Lecture 1 and near the end of Lecture 2. So, here we go. New plane palette, number of passengers 250, to be accommodated in a fuselage width of about 5.8 meters, which is roughly 19 feet, and that would be in a 9 abreast configuration 333. Our expectation for the fuselage length might be in the region of 60 meters. And as in the previous example, I will split this by putting half in the mid fuselage section. And the remaining 30 meters, two thirds of that will go in the rear fuselage. and one third in the front. We can type in 60 minus 30 minus 20, 10 meters. MTOW, early quotes for the 787 project or 7E7 were in the region of 480,000 pounds. That's about 217, 218 tons. The final design is just over 500,000 pounds in the Dash 8 version, which is about 227 tons. I am going to put in 200 tons as a deliberately coarse estimate because we do not yet know the value for that and it is one of the sizing parameters, together with the wing area, the aspect ratio and the thrust. So 200 tons for the MTOW. Wing area, we can again estimate this by saying that the span might be in the region of 60 meters as well, and we will use a typical aspect ratio of 10. So the wing area would then be expected to be 60 squared divided by the aspect ratio which is 360 square meters and that actually happens to be very close to the Boeing Wimpress area for the 787. But this is a trapezoidal definition together with all other wing platform parameters. So we would expect that to be a little bit smaller, but I will put it quite a lot smaller at 300 square meters. Aspect ratio, we enter a value of 9 as an estimate. We expect the plane to cruise at Mach 0.85 and the sweep back will be between 30 and 35 degrees and halfway is almost the exact value for the actual 787. Thickness cord at the root, we expect this to be a thin wing, this time I will put in 13.5%. A fairly sharply tapered wing with a taper ratio of about 0.2. Design cruise mac, essentially an expectation for MMO, set at 0.9. And design cruise altitude, 36,000 feet typically, as in our previous example. The engine will be in the region of 70,000 pounds of thrust about 311 kilonewtons and a nacelle to go with that with a 12 foot diameter. The nacelles are mounted on the wing somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of the exposed semi-span 
uh, we'll put in 0.275 and there are no nacelles mounted on the fuselage. So these are all our vital parameters plus a few more and we can do any report to get a first design. Let's do a geometry report and let's look at the aeroplane. So we'll first go through the process of adjusting the main geometric components wing fuselage nacelles tail. Let's start with the nacelles which are obviously too long and I will reduce the ratio of nacelle length over width to 1.5. Can load a slightly different nacelle shape as well. Draw the aircraft again calculating the geometry mass balance on the way. So these are our new nacelles. Front and rear fuselage shapes. Suitable for the 787. And the same here. Adjusted to the current fuselage dimensions. Let us say that I want this to be slightly more pointed, so I will lengthen the front fuselage a little bit and add a meter to that, which I will also take away from the mid fuselage section to keep the same overall length. Draw the aircraft again and we have a slightly stretched shape. The cabin will go quite a long way into the front fuselage, let's say about 60% and maybe 50% into the rear fuselage as well. We will also lift the cabin floor a little bit. So we have cabin in front fuselage fraction of 0.6, cabin in rear fuselage fraction of 0.5 and the floor location moving it up from 0.25 to 0.35 of the depth. Also I'll assume that the fuselage is slightly deeper than it is wide. Let's put fuselage depth over width to 1.02 and the cross section will be set to double bubble which is this one here where the split between the two bubbles is set at the cabin floor location. And the fuselage at the moment is already very close to that of an actual 787, except for the length, which lies somewhere between the length of a Dash 8 and a Dash 9. We can set an effective average pitch, increase it from about 34 inches to, let's say, 40. So this is an indication of the occupied portion of the fuselage. And this would be used by galleys, emergency exits, restrooms, etc. And let us move on to the wing. Planform break at 30% of the exposed semi-span. We will put a thickness break there as well. The root value we've already put in as 0.135. And let's say that the ratio of T over C at the break to T over C at the root is going to be in the region of 0.7 and tip over root will be about 0.65. We expect this to be a very thin wing outboard. Doing a geometry report, we have at the moment T over C at the root 0.135, at the break point nearly 9.5% and at the tip well under 9%. Dihedral, mostly just for aesthetics, fairly high value, 6 degrees, visually representative. We'll give it a little bit of nominal twist, let's say minus 3 degrees, wash out. And the wing looks like this now, with our break point, and quite thin. We will approximate the wing tip as a nominal flat winglet. So first of all I will put in exist winglets is true and by default we get a classical winglet like this. I will re 
reduced the span of the winglet one third of what we have set the cant angle to 90 degrees so that will be laid flat and it will occupy the full cord we will say a bit more about winglets later on moving to the tail we have currently tail volume coefficients of 0.99 roughly for the horizontal tail and 0.1 for the vertical tail I will set the uh, horizontal tail to about 0.9 and the vertical tail will be a lot smaller about half the size of that so let us go to the trim and balance palette stabilizer volume coefficient set to 0.9 and fin volume coefficient 0.05 static margin currently set at a default of 10 percent I will half that and it could be quite a lot less than that in reality and we'll assume that the fixed equipment is located in terms of its CG at 50% of the fuselage length draw the aircraft and the carriage currently located at 15% of the span reduce that to 10% and uh, this will have a double bogey under carriage so the number of main wheels per aircraft will be double this number which will make a slight difference to the undercarriage weight the actual view of the undercarriage is purely schematic so it looks unchanged we have now gone through the main geometric components wing fuselage tailplane undercarriage and nacelles so far we have disturbed 27 parameters and we have also entered all of the vital ones and we will now run through all of the palettes from top to bottom basic sizing nothing to change here moving on to drag calculations CD naught and CDI for the zero lift and induced drags in general you can get help for all parameters in a palette or for more detail you can just pause and read the aerodynamics chapter of the user guide zero lift drag estimation relies on classical drag build-up approaches based on wetted areas Reynolds number and Mach number dependent skin friction coefficients and empirical shape factors for the different aircraft components wing transition refers to the flow transition from laminar to turbulent it defaults to the leading edge and this is a reasonable assumption for large commercial aircraft operating at high Reynolds numbers I won't disturb it from its default and similar comments apply to fuselage transition induced drag calculations use conventional parabolic terms plus a simple empirical adjustment based on early Whitcomb style winglets with current wingtip design standards it is possible to do better than the default so we will apply a representative user factor on induced drag of 0.97 for our setup and based on the extent of the winglet piano adjusts for the additional CD note and some weight increase due to the outboard shift in load distribution however these are merely sensible estimates and I stress that variability in the quality of tip devices can be enormous I'll also mention that retrofitting winglets to old designs offers more scope for improvement and so can have a stronger effect we can factor individual component drags I will not do that windscreen frontal CD is a minor drag contribution based on the approximate windscreen frontal area modern contoured shapes tend to be extremely smooth so we can reduce this a lot or even eliminate it we can set it to 0 0.01 or indeed to 0 I will leave the other parameters at the default 
the last one here, user adjust CLCD curve, belongs to a special class of parameter and this will let you enter multiple data points to define an entire curve. I will be coming back to this one. Let's move to compressibility. Compressibility method. I will be using the RR adjustable method in all of these presentations. This is a mix of empirical techniques used in industry with origins dating back to RAE Farnborough. The primary controlling parameter is rooftop end, which represents the extent of the flat rooftop pressure distribution in supercritical aerofoils. That's the cordwise location where the pressure recovery shock might form along the upper surface. Basically, it's an indicator of technology level. A bit more than 65% of cord is current best practice, and I will set 0.67. We can use the two parameters CD0 compressibility factor and CD0 compressibility start Mach to add arbitrary drag increments at the highest Mach numbers near MMO. At this point, transonic area rule effects can be significant and local contouring of body shapes has a strong impact. There are no good predictors other than full numerical CFD simulation, so any adjustments here are purely empirical. These two parameters work together with the design cruise Mach which we've already set to Mach 0.9. So as an example, if we set the factor to 1.1 and the start to Mach 0.8, Piano will begin to factor the CD node above Mach 0.8 until it gets to a factor of 1.1 at Mach 0.9. The adjustment is nonlinear, so the extra drag at the halfway Mach remains small. In our case, for normal operations at Mach 0.85, the lift to drag ratio with the adjustment at the moment is, let us look at it, at Mach 0.85, say 37,000 feet and a CL of 0.5, 19.14. And without the adjustment, if I take away the factor, do the drag again, it is 19.24, so that's just a half a percent difference or thereabouts. Let's reintroduce our adjustment back to 1.1. The only other parameter I'll use in this palette is this one, which is another curve type parameter, like the one in the last palette. So let me now go back a bit to user adjust CLCD curve. So we can introduce any kind of shape correction that we want using this parameter, but normally the shape of any such correction is likely to be primarily dictated by aerofoil characteristics, and we'd expect some increases as we move away from a representative design CL. Let me generate an example. A typical cruise CL for this kind of aeroplane would be in the region of 0.5, so I will type in 0.5 here. We will make no adjustment at this CL. Under normal operations we might see values as high as 0.6 or 0.7. We are unlikely to see anything higher than that except briefly at the earliest climb out phases. And we can see values as low as 0.4 or 0.3 and we wouldn't expect anything lower than something like that unless we are doing an emergency descent at light weights. So now we want to introduce some adjustments at all of these CL values. What kind of drag levels can we expect? Well, L over D would be somewhere in the region of 20 for these modern aircraft. So if we divide our CL by the L over D, we have 0.5 divided by 20, that gives us 0 0.025, or in other words, we say 250 drag counts. A single drag count is 0 0.0001, so if I put in 0 0.0002, that's two drag counts, which is significantly less than 1% of expected drag levels at a CL of 0.6. And at 0.7, we might expect more drag correction, so I will put in 0 0.0010, that is now 10 drag counts which is more significant but still low. And at the lower CLs, I can put in two drag counts here as well. 
and 10 drug counts there. There is no reason for these adjustments to be symmetrical in this way really, but we are just estimating order of magnitude numbers at the moment. Let's plot the data. Only one drug count here. So again, these inputs are small under normal flight conditions. Switching to the user adjust max CD curve, we can now introduce an additional drag component as a function of Mach number. We can start at Mach 0.86 and say no adjustment there, zero. And at 0.87 we introduce two drag counts again, 0.002. And at 0.88 let us introduce 15 drag counts, for example. So this would be the shape of our correction now. We can correct this little dip here quite easily if we simply put in 0.861 and 0 again, effectively keeping the slope flat, like this. So this is just a typical example of a Mach correction. Again, I stress that the numbers I'm putting here are actually very small in relation to the overall drag expectations. I should point out that to some extent the lift-dependent curve can vary with Mach and vice versa. Given enough data, you could enter a two-dimensional matrix instead through the polar mod item here. However, if you really know all that, you would probably be able to override the entire polar anyway, which you can do via fixed polars. These numbers I've been giving are examples, but could also be used as first guesses in calibrations of other similarly configured aircraft. Continuing with the engine, Historically, early piano analysis of the 787, around 2005, which you can find in piano.ero, used this generic engine performance model, and later on, two more refined representations. This one and that one. We'll stay with this intermediate model here for our exercise, so let's load this engine. And we also want to associate the engine thrust at the moment with the nacelle. So enable nacelle scaling. Our current thrust input of 70,000 pounds will be linked to a nacelle width of 12 feet, which is about 3.65 meters. Fuel capacity, I can leave everything at its default, except perhaps adjust the fuel density to a US value, since this is a US aeroplane. 6.7 pounds per US gallon typically, which is just over 800 kilograms per cubic meter. Fusel geometry and cabin geometry, no changes necessary. High lift devices, we will choose an aerofoil CL max of around 1.3. These aerofoils tend to be more optimized for high speed performance. Flap type, single slot fowler. Takeoff flap setting, typically let's leave it at 15 degrees. Landing flap setting, let's reduce it to 35 degrees. And it can be even less than that in reality as the landing is not normally critical for this kind of aircraft. Landing settings, as in the previous exercise, I will reduce the approach speed ratio to 1.23, typical of modern 1G stall certifications. And for the takeoff, the V2 speed ratio will be set to 1.13. And I could have got the values that I put in from typical settings, my takeoff and landing preferences, which are these and the same as I just input. Mass parameters. We have 250 passengers at the mass per passenger, and I will set this to a frequently used 210 pounds. 
very near to the 95 kilogram default. There exists no universal setting. Sometimes as much as 250 pounds or more is assumed. Sometimes as little as 150 pounds by domestic operators in the Far East. By definition, this choice influences the design payload and it should always be set together with the OEW and the certification weights before any design range calculations. Leaving cargo mass to zero, the ratio of max payload to design payload is a design choice, typically around 1.5 to 2 for twin aisles. There is enough space in this fuselage for a lot more than 250 passengers, and we might expect a considerable Trans-Pacific freight requirement, so I will set a moderately high value of 1.9. Maximum landing mass ratio, leaving it at the default of 1.07, 7% larger than the MZFW. And furnishings mass per passenger, I will set at 85 kilograms per passenger and clearly we expect significant variations for this depending on the operator. Leaving the other parameters at the default, mass per power plants I will leave everything at the default so it will calculate its own weights. For structural weight estimations, wing mass method, I will select the last setting this setting uses the average of a UK industry derived method and the modification of a method originally developed by Egbert Torrenbeck in the 90s. Now given that this is a composite aircraft there is a significant decision to be made here about applying factors to the structural weight elements. Early expectations were said to be a 15% weight reduction compared to conventional aluminium construction and with some hindsight I am going to set values of a 7% reduction on all of these parameters. It is not possible to make any statements about the difference between individual components. So I will put 1 minus 7 hundredths. So that is a factor of 0.93 on the wing box mass, on the flap mass, on the fuselage mass, stabilizer and fin and I will leave the undercarriage mass unchanged. So clearly there is a, an element of hindsight here and I expect this to give us a good match at the end of the design exercise. Methods. We have changed the compressibility method and the wing mass method. I will make three more minor adjustments. This parameter does a takeoff rotation check and I will set it to reduce the rotation if there is any tail strike possibility. We will not ignore fuel volume violations. This simply means that if there isn't enough fuel capacity the takeoff weight will be reduced for the design range calculation. And then the methodology calibration you can think of this parameter as a kind of placeholder to allow for future changes to Piano's methodologies without necessitating a recalibration of every existing plane file in the database. For now, there are only two example choices which differ trivially in a minor drag calculation, so it really doesn't matter which one we work with. I will pick the latest. And again, as I would normally work with these settings, I could have loaded them from here my methods preferences and these match what I have already input. Miscellaneous I will put a user limited MMO at 0.9. This value merely makes sure that performance calculations are actually restricted and a VMO of 350 knots in terms of equivalent airspeed and it would be possible to input a CAS restriction, but I will not go into that at the moment. Nacelle, no need to enter anything more. Names of linked files, we have specified our engine and the shapes that are used for the nacelles and the front and rear fuselage. New plane, everything specified. 
DOC we will not be using pressurization cabin altitude limited to 6000 feet equivalent and a maximum operating altitude of 43,000 feet reserves and allowances diversion 200 nautical miles 30 minute hold 5% contingency and that is a fraction of mission fuel and hold altitude we can reduce that to one and a half thousand feet taxi out allowance of 10 minutes takeoff time one and a half minutes approach time three minutes and taxi in of five minutes and again these are the values that I could have got from here typical international with 5% contingency tail geometry no changes trim and balance no changes takeoff leaving everything as it is undercarriage as well untitled just an example of a working palette user factors I have disturbed the factors on the structural masses and on the induced drag and introduced these minor adjustments by way of example and wing geometry we have already defined fully so now we have disturbed a total of 64 parameters our aircraft looks like this and we are nearly ready to consider the sizing exercise that we need to do but before that we will specify how to fly the aeroplane under range modes let's pick our VSM flight levels and I will remove anything below 360 on the premise that I really wanted to start at 360 I can remove everything above 430 as well wouldn't make any difference since we are above the max operating altitude at that point specify a Mach number of 0.85 and the climb and descent schedules will be calculated automatically by piano take off conditions done at ISA plus 15 design case and for off design cases as well so let us take a quick look at what our current aircraft actually does range report 5653 nautical miles takeoff field length 7856 feet landing field length not a problem and we will now do a multivariate optimization as a design exercise in a similar way to what we did in the previous example the 100 seater so under study set up the optimization our variables are going to be the MTO mass wing area the reference thrust and the aspect ratio these are the current values and minimum and maximum settings that can be left at their default so we can simply click OK our objective will be to minimize the MTOW constraints design range of 7500 nautical miles and for our initial versions we might set a takeoff field length requirement of about 9000 feet that would be for the 787-8 and we would expect that subsequent evolutions of the aircraft would increase that to maybe 10,000 or 11,000 feet so putting in 9,000 as a good expectation landing field length we don't really expect that to be a problem I would nominally put in 9,000 as well and that is enough in terms of constraints so we are now ready to initiate the optimization We'll let this run for a while with several restarts.
So I've now let this run for five minutes and it's done 59 random restarts and I'm happy to pause it here. So let's look at our current aircraft. Range report, 7500 nautical miles, takeoff performance, 9000 foot TOFL, 5500 feet for the landing. So all our constraints are satisfied. Let me first of all flag this aircraft and I will just name it after its MTOW 231653. And remember it has also been automatically saved as Opti After. So this is now our generic 250 seater with a range requirement of 7,500 nautical miles defined completely from scratch. Let us compare it to our 787 model. We will use Wimpress wing area and available thrust settings. And we have our baseline 787 BOE V14 model here. And Opti after down there. Click OK. We appear to be pretty close. These are our payload range diagrams. We have very similar spans, similar wing areas, MTOWs, OEWs. So this is certainly a good start. Visually, the obvious difference is the fuselage length. We set a fuselage length of 60 meters and the 787 has essentially 56 meters, so there is a 4 meter difference there. We set our passenger count to 250 and the 787 has 242 for the V14 model. Our design range is 7,500 and the 787 with its 242 passengers will do 7,725. So I will now implement these differences into our new aircraft and try again. I will also make a few minor adjustments, mostly for aesthetic purposes. So if we look at, for example, the stabilizer, this one is a classic Boeing design. This is more like an Airbus design with less taper. We can see that for the red shape, the fin has quite a substantial gap from the tail end. It is less for the yellow shape. And there is a minor difference in the landform brake. The one for the 787 is not quite at right angles to the fuselage. So I will now go and load the Opti After design. Check the range. And I will make the changes I have just mentioned. Basic sizing, number of passengers, 242. Fuselage geometry, mid fuselage length, reduce it by 4 meters. And our aircraft now looks like this. I'll reduce the stabilizer taper, move the fin forward and adjust the brake point. So the fin tail cone gap I will increase that value by one meter. Stabilizer taper reduce it to 0.25 under our wing geometry, platform brake trailing edge adjustment. Point nine five. Draw the aircraft again. 
So this is the aircraft we have now and we want it to match the actual 787 performance for the V14 model so we are going to rerun our optimization change our range requirement to 7725 nautical miles and start again I've let this optimization run for about five minutes as well and I will stop it now so here is our final design let me flag this again it has been saved as opti after and we can now do another comparison compare planes once again our baseline 787 V14 and the design we have just derived the opti after and as you can see we have an excellent agreement and this is our payload ranges red one for the baseline yellow one for the opti after so span essentially 60 meters for both designs Wimper's area 360 365 thrust 72,000 pounds nominally just about 71 for this one MTOW 227.9 tons 227.6 OEW 117.7 tons 117.9 MLW 172.173 MZFW 161161 fuel capacity is also very close both of them at the design payload that we specified and both of them reaching the same range requirement TOFL just under 9000 feet for the 787 9000 feet for our nominal aircraft I'll remind you that the 787-8 V14 file that we're using here is a very good comprehensively tested independent piano model of the 787 corresponding to nominal published specifications in the 2014 ACAP document as I indicated in lecture 2 starting at around 16 minutes in I think that the exercise we just went through speaks for itself but clearly such levels of agreement do not happen by accident and there are many points to discuss and expand on in the next lecture we will continue to refine this model with more calibrations and we will have a go at reworking it into another type.